Hey everyone, Daryl again here with Maker's Lab. Today we're going to be continuing our video series on upgrades for my CR10 Mini that I showed in the unboxing video and assembly video back on my first video. Today we're going to be installing the Smooth Fang parts fan cooler or parts cooler. This is a great design. Uh, I really love how it looks once installed. It's very effective. I'm going to show you some prints I've printed, test prints showing its effectiveness. This also installs with a 5015 blower fan so that mounts up here up top. Uh, I like it better than the 4010 cooler fan. Uh, it does provide more airflow. It's also a little quieter when you're running at a non 100% speed. So I'll be wiring that in. I'll be installing the bracket to support this and installing the smooth fan cooler. To start, I'm going to remove the original 4010 parts cooling fan from the right hand side of the housing. Okay, now that those have all been removed, you can go ahead and just dangle this off to the side for now. Now we're going to remove the two screws holding on the front cover. Once you've done that, your front cover will be able to move to the side. Once you have that removed, go ahead and flip it around. On the back, you'll find the four screws holding in the heat break cooling fan. Go ahead and remove those. In order to install, install the support bracket that holds the smooth thing, we will need to remove the extruder from the X carriage. In order to do that, we need to remove the two screws here. All right, now we have the X axis carriage fully stripped. We are able to install the bracket to hold the smooth thing. One thing I want to note that I did do off camera was super glue in the M3 nuts. Uh, into the three mounting posts just so they wouldn't fall out at all. My tolerances on my print were not tight enough to hold them in without doing so, so I did I would glue those in to hold them in place. And place this by lining up the holes with the mounts for the heat break and installing the screw in the bottom left hand corner. Okay, once that's done, you can reinstall your heat break and extruder. Do note that just like the installation without the smooth fang, there is some play in the heat break and the nozzle. Do try to get it lined up as close as possible again to horizontal, although you will likely have to re-level your bed after this installation. Now that that's been installed, we are able to remount the heat break cooling fan. Do note that I'm going to reinstall this with the OEM fan here shown in the video, but I will be replacing that with an Octua 4010 fan, and this is a good opportunity to do that if you're comfortable splicing in the wiring and soldering in that new fan. Okay, that has been reinstalled. I'm going to remove this tape here on the wire harness and get the 4010 blower fan out of the way since I will be replacing that to use it with this installation. All right, so here we are. The tape has been removed and I can get the 4010 fan out of the way more. I will be splicing in the 5015 blower fan for the smooth fang installation. We can now mount the smooth fang itself. It mounts in this orientation here and it's held on by the two screws that you use on the two sides here that screw into those M3 bolts that we put in before. As you can see up top here, there's a slit where you can open up and place the wires. And that's pretty much it. We just need to screw in the bolts on each side through the bracket, through the smooth thing, into these holes here into the M3 nuts that we installed previously. Let me go ahead and do that now. So there's a couple different ways you can handle the installation of the 5015 blower fan. Um, obviously the 4010 has to be removed. You can just cut these wires here, the blue and the yellow, solder in the new fan. In my case it has a red and black wire, heat shrink tubing them, and you're done. Uh, you can also install a connector on there that you can then have a removable fan in the future. Uh, if you really wanted to, you could bring these wires from the original fan all the way back through and disconnect them from the wire end and bring them out. 
Myself, I usually just end up cutting them and then soldering on a new fan connector. Um, if in the future I have to replace the fan again, if the 5015 fan goes bad or I find that it's something I'm doing more frequently, I'll probably opt for a plug, but I, at this point I'm just gonna cut them and splice in the new fan. I'm just gonna bring this up a ways. this guy out here. So now we have the blue and yellow wires we're working on. I'm going to strip those so I can splice in the new fan. Alright, so I've got my 5015 fan here. I've got the wires cut and, split and uh, stripped. I've got the cut wires from the original fan cut and stripped. In my case, since I've done one of these before, I know the blue wire is going to be the ground in my in this instance, in this particular model. So I'm going to go ahead and wire this up. Yellow for the power, black and blue for the ground. Match that to the black for the ground and the red for the power here on the fan. Get those soldered and get them heat shrink sleeved. string tubing is installed, ready to get that shrunk and then get the 5015 fan mounted. Once your 5015 blower fan is wired up and in place, you'll place it into the smooth thing and then just line up the back hole here and you'll use a M3 bolt and M3 nut on you know, either side to secure that to the housing. And here are the M3 bolt installed, so 5015 fan is nice and snug. And the smooth fang installation is complete.